And thanks everybody for being here this morning. I'm pleased that the full committee is meeting to consider legislation that will enhance border security, transportation security, and emergency preparedness and response. Um, at the onset, I would like to acknowledge the absence of our ranking member, uh, ranking member Thompson. Unfortunately, he's not here today, but wanted me to let you know that he appreciates that these measures are getting the attention that they deserve. And as the former chairwoman and member of the Border and Maritime Security Subcommittee, I'm pleased that we're considering H.R. 3202, H.R. 3488, and H.R. 3846. H.R. 3202 seeks to ensure that the Transportation Worker Identification Program, the Credential Program, or the TWIC as we know it, delivers the security benefits that the Congress envisioned when we passed the SAFE Act in 2006. We've worked very hard on a bipartisan manner to make this program work. However, as documented by the Government Accountability Office, the TWIC has not lived up to what we really need and what working class Americans whose livelihoods depend on this TWIC card, they are bearing the brunt of this problem. Longshoremen are paying hard earned money for biometric cards that are truly just flashcards today at our ports. If the Department of Homeland Security's and state vision for the program is that only a few ports are going to have biometric readers, then I suggest maybe we shouldn't make the longshoremen pay this enormous amount of money for a biometric card that they will not use. That's the crux of an amendment that Ranking Member Thompson filed in advance of today's markup. And now turning to preclearance, many members of Congress have serious concerns about the deal that the prior Department of Homeland Security leadership cut to establish preclearance operations in Abu Dhabi. Over 150 members of Congress co-sponsored H.R. 3488 out of concern about the potential impact this expansion would have on our U.S. air carriers, who all too often are shut out of other countries um, when, when we're talking about airport service. So it's critical that even as we consider Chairman McCall's amendment in the nature of a substitute, we not lose sight of this concern and, a concern and that we stand strong against foreign states that may seek to dictate how we operate our ingress and our egress into this nation. Thirdly, I stronger believe that the establishment of such programs should always be done on a risk-based manner. I'm all for pushing out the border, but we must do so in a way that makes us more secure and doesn't divert our limited CBP staffing resources and in particular does not harm our United States carriers. I would also like to acknowledge Mr. Meehan, a, a leader on this issue. He has worked tirelessly alongside with Ms. Jackson Lee and Mr. DeFazio and others to address these concerns. And the last bill out of the Subcommittee on Border and Maritime Security was authored by my friend Chairman Miller and importantly seeks to authorize CBP for the first time as you mentioned, Chairman McCall. This bill is a bipartisan product, and it has a lot of give and take in it. And in subcommittee, Chairman Miller negotiated in good faith with me regarding the language on the electronic search and seizure and standards at short-term detention facilities, including limited, limiting the practice of nighttime repatriation. And today, I plan to offer some amendments that I think Ms. Miller and others will make this bill even stronger. I know that there are a number of amendments that were filed that speak to the current crisis for the federal government with respect to unaccompanied alien children, mostly from Central America, who are seeking safety in the United States. And I would urge my colleagues to work with us to address this issue responsibly and humanely and to resist the urge to politicize the situation of these young people. And out of the Emergency Preparedness Subcommittee, we have two bills that will advance preparedness at a number of critical levels. Representative Brooks' social media working group bill takes a critical step in modernizing the way out, uh, the way our country responds in a crisis and national disasters. And I thank her for doing that. And with the development of various platforms, Google, Twitter, Facebook, we really have to look at what we do with respect to emergencies. 
Another Homeland Security challenge that we're all too well aware of is the Department's lack of interoperability. I commend the gentleman from New Jersey for introducing this critical bill to ensure that the Department of Homeland within itself can communicate to the different components under the umbrella of the DHS. Another place where the challenge of interoperability came into sharp focus was when we had the shootings at Los Angeles International Airport. As someone who travels to and from LAX weekly, I was shocked to hear about the shootings last November. And through oversight conducted by Mr. Hudson and Mr. Richmond on the Subcommittee on Transportation Security, we have a better understanding of what happened that day and what we need to do to enhance preparedness and response. It's heartbreaking that it took the death of a dedicated transportation security officer and injuries to others for us to be able to focus on what's really happening with respect to our Homeland Department there at the airports. And I know that in these tight budgetary times, no federal agency has a dollar to waste. Um, but it seems, going back to TSA and the Office of Inspection, um, there's a problem. And legislation introduced by Representative Sanford seeks to ensure accountability in that office and demands only that those individuals who qualify as criminal investigators are designated as such. I also plan to offer an amendment to the bill regarding our federal air marshals and their ability to purchase firearms for personal use. It mirrors language already adopted by the Homeland Security's Appropriations Subcommittee, and I hope to get your support in that effort. And finally, I want to express my support for legislation that Mr. Richmond introduced, the Honor Flight Act. This past weekend, I had the opportunity, the privilege, to go on the congressional delegation who went to D-Day ceremonies in Normandy, France. Ensuring that these veterans are treated with respect that they deserve when they visit monuments is incredibly important. So I support Mr. Richmond's legislation. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.